South Ossetia, officially the Republic of South Ossetia the state of Alania or Skinvali region, is a disputed territory in the South Caucasus, in the northern part of the internationally recognized Georgian territory. It has a population of 53,000 people who live in an area of 3,900 square kilometers, south of the Russian Caucasus, with 30,000 living in Skinvali. The separatist polity, Republic of South Ossetia or the state of Alania, is recognized as a state by Russia, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Nauru, and Syria. While Georgia lacks control over South Ossetia, the Georgian government and most members of the United Nations consider the territory part of Georgia, whose constitution designates the area as the former autonomous district of South Ossetia. In reference to the former Soviet Autonomous Oblast disbanded in 1990, Georgia does not recognize the existence of South Ossetia as a political entity, and therefore its territory does not correspond to any Georgian administrative area although provisional administrative entity of South Ossetia was created by the Georgian authorities as a transitional measure leading to the settlement of South Ossetia's status, with most of the territory included into Shida Kartli region. The area is often informally referred to as the legally undefined Skinvali region in Georgia and in international organizations when neutrality is deemed necessary. South Ossetia declared independence from the Georgian Soviet Socialist Republic in 1991. The Georgian government responded by abolishing South Ossetia's autonomy and trying to re-establish its control over the region by force. The crisis escalation led to the 1991-92 South Ossetia War. Georgian fighting against those controlling South Ossetia occurred on two other occasions, in 2004 and 2008. The latter conflict led to the Russo-Georgian War, during which Ossetian and Russian forces gained full de facto control of the territory of the former South Ossetian Autonomous Oblast. In the wake of the 2008 war, Georgia and a significant part of the international community consider South Ossetia to be occupied by the Russian military. South Ossetia relies heavily on military, political and financial aid from Russia. Russia does not allow European Union monitoring mission to enter South Ossetia. South Ossetia, Transnistria, Artsakh, and Abkhazia are sometimes referred to as post-Soviet frozen conflict zones. Topic: History. Topic: Topic. Medieval and early modern period Topic. The territory of contemporary South Ossetia was part of Kingdom of Iberia, the latter was unified under the single Georgian monarchy in 11th century, extending its possessions up to Davaleti. The Ossetians are believed to originate from the Alans, an Iranian tribe. In the 8th century a consolidated Alan kingdom, referred to in sources of the period as Alania, emerged in the northern Caucasus Mountains. Around 1239–1277 Alania fell before the Mongol and later to the Timur's armies, that massacred much of the Alanian population. The survivors among the Alans retreated into the mountains of the central Caucasus and gradually started migration to the south. In 1299, Gori was captured by the Alan tribesmen fleeing the Mongol conquest of their original homeland in the North Caucasus. The Georgian king George V recovered the town in 1320, pushing the Alans back over the Caucasus Mountains. In the 17th century, by pressure of Kabardian princes, Ossetians started a second wave of migration from the North Caucasus to Georgia. Ossetian peasants, who were migrating to the mountainous areas of the South Caucasus, often settled in the lands of Georgian feudal lords. The Georgian king of the Kingdom of Kartli permitted Ossetians to immigrate. According to Russian ambassador to Georgia Mikhail Tatishchev, at the beginning of the 17th century there was already a small group of Ossetians living near the headwaters of the greater Lyakvi River. In the 1770s there were more Ossetians living in Kartli than ever before. This period has been documented in the travel diaries of Johann Anton Guldenstadt who visited Georgia in 1772. The Baltic German explorer called modern North Ossetia simply Ossetia, while he wrote that Kartli the areas of modern-day South Ossetia was populated by Georgians and the mountainous areas were populated by both Georgians and Ossetians. Guldenstadt also wrote that the northernmost border of Kartli is the major Caucasus ridge. 
By the end of 18th century, the ultimate sites of Ossetian settlement on the territory of modern South Ossetia were in Kudaro Jajora River Estuary, Greater Liakvi Gorge, the Gorge of Little Liakvi, K. Sani River Gorge, Gouda Tetri Erigva Estuary, and Truso Terek Estuary, the Georgian Kingdom of Kartli Kakheti, part of which was the major territory of modern South Ossetia, was annexed by the Russian Empire in 1801. Ossetian migration to Georgian areas continued in the 19th and 20th centuries, when Georgia was part of the Russian Empire and Ossetian settlements in Trioleti, Boryomi, Bakuriani and Kakheti emerged as well. <laughs> South Ossetia as a part of the Soviet Union Following the Russian Revolution, the area of modern South Ossetia became part of the Democratic Republic of Georgia. In 1918, conflict began between the landless Ossetian peasants living in Shida Kartli interior Georgia, who were influenced by Bolshevism and demanded ownership of the lands they worked, and the Menshevik government-backed ethnic Georgian aristocrats, who were legal owners. Although the Ossetians were initially discontented with the economic policies of the central government, the tensions soon transformed into ethnic conflict. The first Ossetian rebellion began in February 1918, when three Georgian princes were killed and their land was seized by the Ossetians. The central government of Tiflis retaliated by sending the National Guard to the area. However, the Georgian unit retreated after they had engaged the Ossetians. Ossetian rebels then proceeded to occupy the town of Skinvali and began attacking ethnic Georgian civilian population. During uprisings in 1919 and 1920, the Ossetians were covertly supported by Soviet Russia, but even so, were defeated. According to allegations made by Ossetian sources, the crushing of the 1920 uprising caused the death of 5,000 Ossetians, while ensuing hunger and epidemics were the causes of death of more than 13,000 people. The Soviet Georgian government, established after the Red Army invasion of Georgia in 1921, created an autonomous administrative unit for Transcaucasian Ossetians in April 1922 under pressure from Kavburo, the Caucasian Bureau of the Central Committee of the Russian Communist Party, called the South Ossetian. Autonomous Oblast Some believe that the Bolsheviks granted this autonomy to the Ossetians in exchange for their help in fighting the Democratic Republic of Georgia and favoring local separatists, since this area had never been a separate entity prior to the Russian invasion. The drawing of administrative boundaries of the South Ossetian Ao was quite a complicated process. Many Georgian villages were included within the South Ossetian Ao despite numerous protests by the Georgian population. While the city of Skinvali did not have a majority Ossetian population, it was made the capital of the South Ossetian Ao. In addition to parts of Gori Uyezd and Dusheti Uyezd of Tiflis Governorate, parts of Racha Uyezd of Kutaisi Governorate Western Georgia were also included within the South Ossetian Ao. All these territories historically had been indigenous Georgian lands. Historical Ossetia in the North Caucasus did not have its own political entity before 1924, when the North Ossetian Autonomous Oblast was created. Although the Ossetians had their own language, Ossetian, Russian, and Georgian were administrative, state languages. Under the rule of Georgia's government during Soviet times, Ossetians enjoyed minority cultural autonomy, including speaking the Ossetian language and teaching it in schools. In 1989, two-thirds of Ossetians in the Georgian Soviet Socialist Republic lived outside the South Ossetian Ao. <inaudible> Georgian Ossetian conflict Topic. 1989–2008 Tensions in the region began to rise amid rising nationalism among both Georgians and Ossetians in 1989. Before this, the two communities of the South Ossetian Autonomous Oblast of the Georgian SSR had been living in peace with each other except for the 1918–1920 events. Both ethnicities have had a high level of interaction and high rates of intermarriage. Dispute surrounding the presence of the Ossetian people in the South Caucasus has been one of the causes of conflict. Although Georgian historiography believes that Ossetian mass migration to the South Caucasus Georgia began in the 17th century, Ossetians claim to have been residing in the area since ancient times and that present-day South Ossetia is their historical homeland. No evidence exists to back up the Ossetian claims of being indigenous to South Ossetia. 
Some Ossetian historians accept that the migration of Ossetian ancestors to modern South Ossetia began after the Mongol invasions of the 13th century, while one South Ossetian de facto foreign minister in the 1990s admitted that the Ossetians first appeared in the area only in the early 17th century. Since it was created after the Russian invasion of 1921, South Ossetia was regarded as artificial creation by Georgians during the Soviet era. The South Ossetian Popular Front was created in 1988. On 10 November 1989, the South Ossetian Regional Council asked the Georgian Supreme Council to upgrade the region to the status of an autonomous republic. The decision to transform the South Ossetian AO into the South Ossetian ASSR by the South Ossetian authorities escalated the conflict. On the 11th of November, this decision was revoked by the Georgian parliament. The Georgian authorities removed the first party secretary of the oblast from his position. The Georgian Supreme Council adopted a law barring regional parties in summer 1990. Since this was interpreted by South Ossetians as a move against Adiman Nikas, they declared full sovereignty as part of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics USSR on 20 September 1990. Ossetians boycotted subsequent Georgian parliamentary elections and held their own contest in December. In October 1990, the parliamentary elections in Georgia was won by Z via Gamsakurdia's round table bloc. On the 11th of December 1990, Z Gamsakurdia S government declared the Ossetian election illegitimate and abolished South Ossetia's autonomous status altogether. Gamsakurdia rationalized the abolition of Ossetian autonomy by saying, "They Ossetians have no right to a state here in Georgia. They are a national minority. Their homeland is North Ossetia. Here they are newcomers." When the Georgian parliament declared a state of emergency in the territory of South Ossetian AO on 12 December 1990, troops from both Georgian and Russian interior ministries were sent to the region. After the Georgian National Guard was formed in early 1991, Georgian troops entered Skinvali on 5 January 1991. The 1991-92 South Ossetia War was characterized by general disregard for international humanitarian law by uncontrollable militias, with both sides reporting atrocities. The Soviet military facilitated a ceasefire as ordered by Mikhail Gorbachev in January 1991, later they were participating in the conflict on the Ossetian side. In March and April 1991, Soviet interior troops were reported actively disarming militias on both sides, and deterring the inter-ethnic violence. Z. Vyad Gamsakhurdia asserted that the Soviet leadership was encouraging South Ossetian separatism in order to force Georgia not to leave the Soviet Union. Georgia declared its independence in April 1991. As a result of the war, about 100,000 ethnic Ossetians fled the territory and Georgia proper, most across the border into North Ossetia. A further 23,000 ethnic Georgians fled South Ossetia to other parts of Georgia. Many South Ossetians were resettled in uninhabited areas of North Ossetia from which the Ingush had been expelled by Stalin in 1944, leading to conflicts between Ossetians and Ingush over the right of residence in former Ingush territory. On 29 April 1991, the western part of South Ossetia was affected by an earthquake, which killed 200 and left 300 families homeless. In late 1991, dissent was mounting against Gamsakhurdia in Georgia due to his intolerance of critics and attempts to con concentrate political power. On the 22nd of December 1991, after a coup d'état, Gamsakhurdia and his supporters were besieged by the opposition, which was backed by the National Guard, in several government buildings in Tbilisi. The ensuing heavy fighting resulted in over 200 casualties, and left the center of the Georgian capital in ruins. On 6 January, Gamsakhurdia and several of his supporters fled the city for exile. Afterwards, the Georgian Military Council, an interim government, was formed by a triumvirate of Jabba Iaseliani, Tengiz Kidovani and Tengiz Sigwa, and, in March 1992, they invited Eduard Shevardnadze, a former Soviet minister, to come to Georgia to assume control of the Georgian State Council. On 24 June 1992, Shevardnadze and the South Ossetian government signed the Sochi ceasefire agreement, brokered by Russia. The agreement included obligations to avoid the use of force, and Georgia pledged not to impose sanctions against South Ossetia. The Georgian government retained control over substantial portions of South Ossetia, including the town of Akalgori. A joint peacekeeping force of Ossetians, Russians and Georgians was established. 
On 6 November 1992, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe OSCE set up a mission in Georgia to monitor the peacekeeping operation. From then until mid-2004 South Ossetia was generally peaceful. Following the 2003 Rose Revolution, Mikhail Saakashvili became the president of Georgia in 2004. Ahead of the 2004 parliamentary and presidential elections, he promised to restore the territorial integrity of Georgia. During one of his early speeches, Saakashvili addressed the separatist regions, saying, N either Georgia nor its president will put up with disintegration of Georgia. Therefore, we offer immediate negotiations to our Abkhazian and Ossetian friends. We are ready to discuss every model of statehood by taking into consideration their interests for the promotion of their future development." Since 2004, tensions began to rise as the Georgian authorities strengthened their efforts to bring the region back under their rule. Georgia sent police to close down a black market, which was one of the region's chief sources of revenue, selling foodstuffs and fuel smuggled from Russia. This was followed by fighting by Georgian troops and peacekeepers against South Ossetian militiamen and freelance fighters from Russia. Hostage takings, shootouts and occasional bombings left dozens dead and wounded. A ceasefire deal was reached on the 13th of August though it was repeatedly violated. The Georgian government protested against the allegedly increasing Russian economic and political presence in the region and against the uncontrolled military of the South Ossetian side. It also considered the peacekeeping force consisting in equal parts of South Ossetians, North Ossetians, Russians and Georgians to be non-neutral and demanded its replacement. Joseph Biden, Chairman, U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Richard Lugar, and Mel Martinez sponsored a resolution accusing Russia of attempting to undermine Georgia's territorial integrity and called for replacing the Russian manned peacekeeping force operating under CIS mandate. According to U.S. Senator Richard Lugar, the United States supported Georgia's call for the withdrawal of Russian peacekeepers from the conflict zones. Later, EU South Caucasus envoy Peter Semnaby said that, "...Russia's actions in the Georgia spy row have damaged its credibility as a neutral peacekeeper in the EU's Black Sea neighborhood." 2008 war Topic. Tensions between Georgia and Russia began escalating in April 2008. A bomb explosion on 1 August 2008 targeted a car transporting Georgian peacekeepers. South Ossetians were responsible for instigating this incident, which marked the opening of hostilities and injured five Georgian servicemen. In response, several South Ossetian militiamen were hit. South Ossetian separatists began shelling Georgian villages on 1 August. These artillery attacks caused Georgian servicemen to return fire periodically since the 1st of August. At around 1900 on the 7th of August 2008, Georgian President Mikhail Saakashvili announced a unilateral ceasefire and called for peace talks. However, escalating assaults against Georgian villages located in the South Ossetian conflict zone were soon matched with gunfire from Georgian troops, who then proceeded to move in the direction of the capital of the self-proclaimed Republic of South Ossetia Skinvali on the night of 8 August, reaching its center in the morning of 8 August. One Georgian diplomat told Russian newspaper Kommersant on 8 August that by taking control of Skinvali, Tbilisi wanted to demonstrate that Georgia wouldn't tolerate killing of Georgian citizens. According to Russian military expert Pavel Felgenhauer, the Ossetian provocation was aimed at triggering the Georgian response, which was needed as a pretext for premeditated Russian military invasion. According to Georgian intelligence, and several Russian media reports, parts of the regular non Russian army had already moved to South Ossetian territory through the Roki Tunnel before the Georgian military action. Russia accused Georgia of aggression against South Ossetia and launched a large-scale land, air and sea invasion of Georgia with the pretext of peace enforcement operation on 8 August 2008. Russian airstrikes against targets within Georgia were also launched. Abkhaz forces opened a second front on 9 August by attacking the Kodori Gorge, held by Georgia. Skinvali was seized by the Russian military by 10 August. Russian forces occupied the Georgian cities of Zugdidi, Sanaki, Poti, and Gori the last one after the ceasefire agreement was negotiated. Russian Black Sea Fleet blockaded the Georgian coast. 
A campaign of ethnic cleansing against Georgians in South Ossetia was conducted by South Ossetians, with Georgian villages around Skinvali being destroyed after the war had ended. The war displaced 192,000 people, and while many were able to return to their homes after the war, a year later around 30,000 ethnic Georgians remained displaced. In an interview published in Kummersant, South Ossetian leader Eduard Kakoiti said he would not allow Georgians to return. President of France Nicolas Sarkozy negotiated a ceasefire agreement on 12 August 2008. On 17 August, Russian President Dmitry Medvedev announced that Russian forces would begin to pull out of Georgia the following day. Russia recognized Abkhazia and South Ossetia as separate republics on 26 August. In response to Russia's recognition, the Georgian government severed diplomatic relations with Russia. Russian forces left the buffer areas bordering Abkhazia and South Ossetia on 8 October and the European Union monitoring mission in Georgia assumed authority over the buffer areas. Since the war, Georgia has maintained that Abkhazia and South Ossetia are Russian-occupied Georgian territories. Geography and climate South Ossetia is in the very heart of the Caucasus at the juncture of Asia and Europe, and it occupies the southern slopes of the Greater Caucasus mountain range and the foothills. Part of the Kartalan Valley. South Ossetia is a very mountainous region. The Liki Range is roughly in the center of South Ossetia, and the plateau that's also roughly in the center of South Ossetia is called Iberia. The Greater Caucasus mountain range forms the northern border of South Ossetia with Russia, and the main roads through the mountain range into Russian territory led through the Roki Tunnel between South and North Ossetia and the Darial Gorge. The Roki Tunnel was vital for the Russian military in the 2008 South Ossetia War because it is the only direct route through the Caucasus Mountains. South Ossetia covers an area of about 3,900 square kilometers (1,506 square miles), separated by the mountains from the more populous North Ossetia, which is part of Russia, and extending southwards almost to the Mtk Vari River in Georgia. More than 89% of South Ossetia lies over 1,000 meters (3,281 feet) above sea level, and its highest point is Mount Kalatsa at 3,938 meters (12,920 feet) above sea level. Nearby Mount Kazbek is 5,047 meters (16,558 feet), and it is of volcanic origin. The region between Kazbek and Shkara, a distance of about 200 kilometers (124 miles) along the main Caucasus range, is dominated by numerous glaciers. Out of the 2,100 glaciers that exist in the Caucasus today, approximately 30% are located within Georgia, which South Ossetia forms a part of. The term Lesser Caucasus Mountains is often used to describe the mountainous highland areas of southern Georgia that are connected to the Greater Caucasus Mountain Range by the Liki Range. The overall region can be characterized as being made up of various, interconnected mountain ranges largely of volcanic origin and plateaus that do not exceed 3,400 meters feet in elevation. Most of South Ossetia is in the Kura Basin with the rest of it in the Black Sea Basin. The Liki and Racha ridges act as divide separating these two basins. Major rivers in South Ossetia include the Greater and Little Liakvi, Kaysani, Medjuda, Talidin, Canal Saltanis, Ptsa River, and host of other tributaries. South Ossetia's climate is affected by subtropical influences from the east and Mediterranean influences from the west. The Greater Caucasus Range moderates the local climate by serving as a barrier against cold air from the north, which results in the fact that, even at great heights, it is warmer there than in the northern Caucasus. Climatic zones in South Ossetia are determined by distance from the Black Sea and by altitude. The plains of eastern Georgia are shielded from the influence of the Black Sea by mountains that provide a more continental climate. The foothills and mountainous areas including the Greater Caucasus Mountains experience cool, wet summers and snowy winters, with snow cover often exceeding 2 meters in many regions. The penetration of humid air masses from the Black Sea to the west of South Ossetia is often blocked by the Liki mountain range. The wettest periods of the year in South Ossetia generally occur during spring and autumn while the winter and summer months tend to be the driest. 
Elevation plays an important role in South Ossetia where climatic conditions above 1,500 meters feet are considerably colder than in any lower-lying areas. The regions that lie above 2,000 meters feet frequently experience frost even during the summer months. The average temperature in South Ossetia in January is around plus 4 degrees Celsius, and the average temperature in July is around plus 20.3 degrees Celsius. The average yearly liquid precipitation in South Ossetia is around 598 mm. In general, summer temperatures average 20 degrees Celsius 68 degrees Fahrenheit to 24 degrees Celsius .2 degrees Fahrenheit across much of South Ossetia, and winter temperatures average 2 degrees Celsius .6 degrees Fahrenheit to 4 degrees Celsius .2 degrees Fahrenheit. Humidity is relatively low and rainfall across South Ossetia averages 500 to 800 mm .7 to .5 in per year. Alpine and highland regions have distinct microclimates though. At higher elevations, precipitation is sometimes twice as heavy as in the eastern plains of Georgia. Alpine conditions begin at about 2,100 meters feet, and above 3,600 meters feet, snow and ice are present year-round. South Ossetia S economy is primarily agricultural, although less than 10% of South Ossetia S land area is cultivated. Cereals, fruit and vines are the major produce. Forestry and cattle industries are also maintained. A number of industrial facilities also exist, particularly around the capital, Skinvali. Political status Following the 2008 South Ossetia War, Russia recognized South Ossetia as independent. This unilateral recognition by Russia was met by condemnation from Western blocs, such as NATO, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe and the European Council due to the violation of Georgia's territorial integrity. The EU's diplomatic response to the news was delayed by disagreements between Eastern European states, the UK wanting a harsher response and Germany, France and other states. Desire not to isolate Russia. Former U.S. envoy Richard Holbrook said the conflict could encourage separatist movements in other former Soviet states along Russia's western border. Several days later, Nicaragua became the second country to recognize South Ossetia. Venezuela recognized South Ossetia on September 10, 2009, becoming the third UN member state to do so. The European Union, Council of Europe, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, and most UN member countries do not recognize South Ossetia as an independent state. The de facto republic governed by the secessionist government held a second independence referendum on the 12th of November 2006, after its first referendum in 1992 was not recognized by most governments as valid. According to the Skinvali election authorities, the referendum turned out a majority for independence from Georgia where 99% of South Ossetian voters supported independence and the turnout for the vote was 95%. The referendum was monitored by a team of 34 international observers from Germany, Austria, Poland, Sweden and other countries at 78 polling stations. However, it was not recognized internationally by the UN, European Union, OSCE, NATO and the Russian Federation, given the lack of ethnic Georgian participation and the illegality of such a referendum without recognition from the Georgian government in Tbilisi. The European Union, OSCE and NATO condemned the referendum. Parallel to the secessionist held referendum and elections, to Eduard Kakoiti, the then president of South Ossetia, the Ossetian opposition movement People of South Ossetia for Peace organized their own elections contemporaneously in Georgian-controlled areas within South Ossetia, in which Georgian and some Ossetian inhabitants of the region voted in favor of Dmitry Sanikoyev as the alternative president of South Ossetia. The alternative elections of Sanikoyev claimed full support of the ethnic Georgian population. In April 2007, Georgia created the Provisional Administrative Entity of South Ossetia, staffed by ethnic Ossetian members of the separatist movement. Dmitry Sanikoyev was assigned as the leader of the entity. It was intended that this provisional administration would negotiate with central Georgian authorities regarding its final status and conflict resolution. 
On 10 May 2007, Sanikoyev was appointed by the President of Georgia as the head of South Ossetian Provisional Administrative Entity. On July 13, 2007, Georgia set up a state commission, chaired by the Prime Minister Zarab Naghaideli, to develop South Ossetia's autonomous status within the Georgian state. According to the Georgian officials, the status was to be elaborated within the framework of an all-inclusive dialogue with all the forces and communities within the Ossetian society. Topic. Plans of integration with the Russian Federation Topic. On 30 August 2008, Tarzan Kakoiti, the deputy speaker of South Ossetia, Parliament, announced that the region would soon be absorbed into Russia, so that South and North Ossetians could live together in one united Russian state. Russian and South Ossetian forces began giving residence in Akhalgori, the biggest town in the predominantly ethnic Georgian eastern part of South Ossetia, the choice of accepting Russian citizenship or leaving. However, Eduard Kakoiti, the then president of South Ossetia, later stated that South Ossetia would not forego its independence by joining Russia. We are not going to say no to our independence, which has been achieved at the expense of many lives. South Ossetia has no plans to join Russia. Civil Georgia has said that this statement contradicts previous ones made by Kakoiti earlier that day, when he indicated that South Ossetia would join North Ossetia in the Russian Federation. The South Ossetian and Russian presidents signed an Alliance and Integration Treaty on the 18th of March 2015. The agreement includes provisions to incorporate the South Ossetian military into Russia's armed forces, integrate the customs service of South Ossetia into that of Russia's, and commit Russia to paying state worker salaries in South Ossetia at rates equal to those in the North Caucasus Federal District. The Associated Press described the treaty as calling for nearly full integration," and compared it to a 2014 agreement between Russia and Abkhazia. The Georgian Foreign Ministry described the signing of the treaty as, "...actual annexation," of the disputed region by Russia, and the United States and European Union said they would not recognize it. In another move towards integration with the Russian Federation, South Ossetian President Leonid Tibilov proposed in December 2015 a name change to, "...South Ossetia Alania." In analogy with North Ossetia Alania, a Russian federal subject. Tibilov furthermore suggested holding a referendum on joining the Russian Federation prior to April 2017, which would lead to a united Ossetia Alania. In April 2016, Tibilov said he intended to hold the referendum before August of that year. However, on 30 May, Tibilov postponed the referendum until after the presidential election due in April 2017. At the name change referendum, nearly 80% of those who voted endorsed the name change, while the presidential race was won by Anatoly Bibilov against the incumbent, Tibilov, who had been supported by Moscow and who, unlike Bibilov, was ready to heed Moscow's wish for the integration referendum not be held any time soon. Topic. Law on Occupied Territories of Georgia Topic. In late October 2008 President Saakashvili signed into law legislation on the occupied territories passed by the Georgian parliament. The law covers the breakaway regions of Abkhazia and Skinvali territories of former South Ossetian Autonomous Oblast. The law spells out restrictions on free movement and economic activity in the territories. In particular, according to the law, foreign citizens should enter the two breakaway regions only through Georgia proper. Entry into Abkhazia should be carried out from the Zugdidi district and into South Ossetia from the Gori district. The major road leading to South Ossetia from the rest of Georgia passes through the Gori district. The legislation, however, also lists special cases in which entry into the breakaway regions will not be regarded as illegal. It stipulates that a special permit on entry into the breakaway regions can be issued if the trip there serves Georgia's state interests, peaceful resolution of the conflict, de-occupation or humanitarian purposes." The law also bans any type of economic activity, entrepreneurial or non-entrepreneurial, if such activities require permits, licenses or registration in accordance with Georgian legislation. It also bans air, sea and railway communications and international transit via the regions, mineral exploration and money transfers. 
The provision covering economic activities is retroactive, going back to 1990. The law says that the Russian Federation, the state which has carried out military occupation, is fully responsible for the violation of human rights in Abkhazia and South Ossetia. The Russian Federation, according to the document, is also responsible for compensation of material and moral damage inflicted on Georgian citizens, stateless persons and foreign citizens, who are in Georgia and enter the occupied territories with appropriate permits. The law also says that de facto state agencies and officials operating in the occupied territories are regarded by Georgia as illegal. The law will remain in force until the full restoration of Georgian jurisdiction. Over the breakaway regions is realized. In November 2009, during the opening ceremony of a new Georgian embassy building in Kiev, Ukraine, Georgian President Mikhail Saakashvili stated that residents of South Ossetia and Abkhazia could also use its facilities. I would like to assure you, my dear friends, that this is your home, as well, and here you will always be able to find support and understanding. Politics Topic. Until the armed conflict of August 2008, South Ossetia consisted of a checkerboard of Georgian-inhabited and Ossetian-inhabited towns and villages. The largely Ossetian capital city of Skinvali and most of the other Ossetian-inhabited communities were governed by the separatist government, while the Georgian-inhabited villages and towns were administered by the Georgian government. This close proximity and the intermixing of the two communities has made the Georgian Ossetian conflict particularly dangerous, since any attempt to create an ethnically pure territory would involve population transfers on a large scale. The political dispute has yet to be resolved, and the South Ossetian separatist authorities govern the region with effective independence from Tbilisi. Although talks have been held periodically between the two sides, little progress was made under the government of Eduard Shevardnadze (1993–2003). His successor, Mikhail Saakashvili, elected 2004, made the reassertion of Georgian governmental authority a political priority. Having successfully put an end to the de facto independence of the southwestern province of Ajaria in May 2004, he pledged to seek a similar solution in South Ossetia. After the 2004 clashes, the Georgian government has intensified its efforts to bring the problem to international attention. On 25 January 2005, President Saakashvili presented a Georgian vision for resolving the South Ossetian conflict at the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe session in Strasbourg. Late in October, the U.S. government and the OSCE expressed their support to the Georgian Action Plan presented by Prime Minister Zarab Naghaideli at the OSCE Permanent Council at Vienna on 27 October 2005. On 6 December, the OSCE Ministerial Council in Ljubljana adopted a resolution supporting the Georgian Peace Plan which was subsequently rejected by the South Ossetian de facto authorities. Topic. Government. Topic. Under Article 46 of the Constitution, the President of the Republic of South Ossetia is head of state and head of the executive branch of government. The President of RSO is elected by direct popular vote for five years. Since 21 April 2017, the position is held by Anatoly Bibilov who won a contested election running against the incumbent, Leonid Tibilov. The country's legislative body is the unicameral parliament of South Ossetia that comprises 34 members elected by popular vote for five years. The government of South Ossetia is a component of the integrated system of the executive branch. Military <inaudible> 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 South Ossetia's armed forces in 2017 were partially incorporated into the armed forces of Russia. Topic. Demographics Topic. Before the Georgian-Ossetian conflict roughly two-thirds of the population of South Ossetia was Ossetian and 25-30% was Georgian. The eastern quarter of the country, around the town and district of Akalgori, was predominantly Georgian, while the center and west were predominantly Ossetian. Much of the mountainous north is sparsely inhabited. See map at Languages of the Caucasus 
Because the Statistical Office of Georgia was not able to conduct the 2002 Georgian census in South Ossetia, the present composition of the population of South Ossetia is unknown, although according to some estimates there were 47,000 ethnic Ossetians and 17,500 ethnic Georgians in South Ossetia in 2007.2009 population estimate. During the war, according to Georgian officials, 15,000 Georgians moved to Georgia proper. South Ossetian officials indicate that 30 30,000 Ossetians fled to North Ossetia, and a total of 500 citizens of South Ossetia were killed. This left the estimated population at 54,500. However Russia's reconstruction plan involving $600 million in aid to South Ossetia may have spurred immigration into the de facto independent republic, especially with Russia's movement of 3,700 soldiers into South Ossetia. RIA Novosti places the population of South Ossetia at 80,000, although this figure is probably too optimistic. According to the 2016 census conducted by the South Ossetian authorities, the region's total population was 53,532, including 48,146 Ossetians, 89.9%, 3,966 Georgians, 7%, and 610 Russians. Of these, 30,432 lived in Skinvali. The Georgian authorities have questioned the accuracy of these data. Christianity is the major religion practiced by the Ossetians, but Islam and the neo pagan religion Aitsag Din right faith, also have followers. Economy <inaudible> 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 Following the war in the 1990s, South Ossetia struggled economically. South Ossetian GDP was estimated at $15 million $250 per capita in a work published in 2002. Employment and supplies are scarce. Additionally, Georgia cut off supplies of electricity to the region, which forced the South Ossetian government to run an electric cable through North Ossetia. The majority of the population survives on subsistence farming. Virtually the only significant economic asset that South Ossetia possesses is control of the Roki Tunnel that is used to link Russia and Georgia, from which the South Ossetian government reportedly obtained as much as a third of its budget by levying customs duties on freight traffic before the war. President Eduard Kokoiti has admitted that his country is seriously dependent on Russian economic assistance, South Ossetia. S poverty threshold stood at 3062 rubles a month in the fourth quarter of 2007 or 23.5% below Russia's average while South Ossetians have incomparably smaller incomes before the 2008 South Ossetia war South Ossetia S industry consisted of 22 small factories with a total production of 61.6 million rubles in 2006 in 2007, only seven factories were functioning. In March, 2009, it was reported that most of the production facilities were standing idle and were in need of repairs. Even successful factories have a shortage of workers, are in debt and have a shortage of working capital. One of the largest local enterprises is the Emilprovid factory, which has 130 employees. The South Ossetian authorities are planning to improve finances by boosting the local production of flour and thus reducing the need for flour imports. For this purpose, the area planted with wheat was increased tenfold in 2008 from 130 hectares to 1,500 hectares. The wheat harvest in 2008 was expected to be 2,500 tons of grain. The South Ossetian Agriculture Ministry also imported some tractors in 2008, and was expecting delivery of more farm machinery in 2009. Russia planned to spend 10 billion rubles in the restoration of South Ossetia in 2008. The economy is currently very dependent on funding from Russia. In 2017, the administration of South Ossetia estimated its GDP to be nearly 0.1 billion US dollars. Culture Topic. Topic. Education Topic. The country's principal university is South Ossetia State University in Skinvali. After the Russo-Georgian War in 2008, education officials attempted to place most university-bound students from South Ossetia in Russian post-secondary education institutions. 
Topic: Public holidays. Topic. Topic: Gallery. Topic: Pictures from South Ossetia. Topic. See also. Topic. North Ossetia Alania. 2008 Georgia Russia crisis. Abkhazia South Ossetia relations. Community for Democracy and Rights of Nations. Military of South Ossetia. Russia South Ossetia relations. South Ossetian passport. Vehicle registration plates of South Ossetia. Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. Topic. Citations Topic. Topic. Sources Topic Books Topic External Links Topic President of Republic of South Ossetia in Russian Crisis Profile, Georgia, Abkhazia, S. Ossetia from Reuters Alert Net BBC Overview of South Ossetia Border South Ossetia for use in Google Earth